Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number eight of the NTBA Recap Show with Dom Santina and John Dunlap. We will update you on the three new NTBA Grand National Champions that were crowned this last week. Two would be crowned in Wauseon, Ohio on Friday night, and one being crowned Saturday in Hoopston, Illinois. We will also cover the pro stocks that took place in Canton, Ohio, and of course, get you ready to, for the final so-called regular season of the NTBA Grand National season. So, John, we will take a look at where you were stationed this weekend in Wauseon, Ohio, and we'll take a look at the M.E. Miller Tire Tri-State Showdown at Modified Mini Results from Wauseon, Ohio on Friday night. On top was Ken Vini with the funny little farm ball going 3.59 and 7 to take the win. C.J. Graysick and Pile Driver would finish second. Brian McDonald in very little sanity would come across in third. Chris Shoemaker and the Phoenix would finish fourth, and Tyler Slaw and Have No Mercy would round out your top five on Friday night. Our uh, situation with, with the minis was originally that Chase Richardson entered with a two-point lead on Ken Vini and a six-point lead on Sam McCrary and his carbon copy, and uh, both of those were contenders still to the championship. Uh, as things worked out, Brian McDonald laid down the first pass of the night uh, that was kind of that wow pass that we've come to expect from Brian. And that meant that Chase had to top that to really stay far enough ahead to not worry about a points count. Well, he fell 10 feet behind Brian McDonald, and that left the door open for Ken to surpass them both. And he did exactly that. He put 10 feet on Brian McDonald, not an easy thing to do in this season. Uh, and that erased the two-point margin and clinched the championship for Ken Vini, his second straight dating back to 2019 and his fourth Grand National title overall. Uh, he has also won championships in the Modified and the Unlimited divisions early on. Uh, Chase did wind up hanging on to second place at five back. Sam McCurry wound up in third place at nine back with carbon copy. Bruce Slaw in fourth at 17 back will go to the Enderly, as will C.J. Grayshick, Chase's teammate, with a pile driver. And you might note that uh, among the names not present in that list of five we just mentioned were Kester and Bauer. And this will be the first time in many years uh, that neither of the vehicles from, or vehicles from neither of those teams uh, will be at the Enderly. It'll be a different look to the pit area. Um, in Urbana. Yeah, you can almost say it was a come from behind win, but I mean, Ken Vini had led the points for most of the season and then the last couple of weeks fell back uh, just to, a, a, he broke a couple belts, just had a couple bad hooks, uh, but gets back that consistency that he had early on and through the middle part of the season to claim the championship there at the end. Yes, it was a rough bowling green for Ken. I, not a bad uh, Friday, but his Saturday session was substandard for his, for his standards. Uh, and so that, that can drop you back when everybody shows up who has a Grand National license. Uh, it can knock you back in the points a little bit. It did knock him two points behind Chase, but you just kind of had that feel. Of course, Chase won at Wausau. I, I believe we talked in last week's video. Chase had won previously at Wausau uh, the last time they were there. And so he had to feel pretty confident going in there. Uh, partly, I'd say it was kind of a rough draw, but partly it was Ken on the very top top of his game because again to put 10 feet on what has been a dominant tractor where he has appeared uh, very little sanity of brian mcdonald uh was saying something uh, ken had all eight cylinders going and uh both tires a turn in there that night and he was just destined for a championship and he won it that's what champions do yeah they bring their a game when it matters most yep when looking at the results from the wasion pull for the four-wheel drive class once again in the m.e miller tire tri-state showdown in Wauseon, Ohio, on Friday night, it would be Carmen Foster and the Foster Child taking the win with a pass of 332.4 feet. Mark Mangan and the Outlaw would finish in second at 329 and 7. And Tyler Cobb and the Bandit would round out the top podium with a 329.2 foot pass. Ben Ellis and Ben Jammin would finish in fourth. And Tyler Corsa and the Patriot would round out the top five to finish the regular season for the four-wheel drive class. So on to four-wheel drive, which was the other class decided on the same grandstand track right after the minis were done in Wauseon, Ohio. And kind of a similar situation for that uh, class as uh, we had the leader, Jake Zering, uh, with also thinking of another similarity with two vehicles, admittedly one driven by Chase and one driven by CJ in the uh, in the mini uh, class, but Jake drives both of the Fatted's Eyewear and Rule Number 19 trucks. 
Uh, and so two opportunities to get on the track, and Fathead's Eyewear made the poorer of the two, unfortunately, for Jake. At about midway through the class, he had a nasty chassis hop. I've not seen Fathead's do that all season long. He just found the roughest part of the track, and really a sad state of affairs there, which meant that all Carmen had to do about four hooks later was pack, pass Jake by by about five feet, because that would put a number of trucks in between. She did more than that and went out and won the class, and it was sweet revenge on the Wasi on track that had cost her three years before, and similar circumstances when Ben Ellis laid down a winning run and that toppled her from the top spot going in. So she overcomes Jake Zaring's three-point lead uh, to lead uh, at the final margin by six over Fathead's Eyewear. Ted Skelton's The Rock, uh, which was in the hunt for the championship all season long, finishes 10 back, as do also Ben Ellis with Ben Jammin 10 back and Jake's other truck rule number 19 10 back. Missing from that list, the Holman brothers with with foreplay, and it'll be the second time in 34 seasons that they will not be invited to the Enderley, uh, finishing sixth at 14 out. Yeah, and we talked about it there at Canton afterwards. Kind of interesting there, whether it was celebratory or planned or whatever, but Carmen driving her dad Rob's truck afterwards too in that class, so maybe Rob didn't want to interfere in case of what happened to Carmen or what, but Regardless, she ends up pulling both trucks here uh, that night in Wasion. Probably a little bit of gun shyness, but actually Carmen always wanted the opportunity to drive that truck. It is the first time I've seen her drive it in national competition. I think the first time she has ever driven it. Uh, and so that was just kind of an exciting little bit of icing on the cake. And it didn't wind up mattering because as soon as she had even led the class, she had put enough points on, on Mr. Zaring uh, to clinch the championship. So that was just a fun run there at the end and uh, just a, a joy to watch all, all, uh, all night long. Uh, very, very thrilled people there in the foster camp. Uh, in fact, it reminded me somewhat of how Rob won his own championship back in 2010. 11 years ago, they clinched that year in Findlay, Ohio, and I believe he won that class in very similar fashion. Just passed the leader by and did what he had to do on the track. Didn't worry about counting points. Just take them all. Just win them. It's the best way to do it. Easiest Indeed. way to do it. Yep. So those are the two classes I was able to see. How about you? You got to watch a really good pro star class. Didn't end in a title, uh, but it may have gotten pretty close to clinching one for Rob Russell by holding serve. Yeah, the pro stocks still have two more hooks coming up this next week in Sandwich, but they were in Canton, Ohio, the only pro stock class going on. And on Friday, the Connies would continue to apply pressure to Rob Russell as Mike Connie would give it a good shot. He would take his Mac Nasty John Deere to 334 and 4 to take the win, while hometown puller Danny Smucker would take his John Deere Rampage to the second place spot and please the Canton crowd, and Julia Ray would once again help make put a second county tractor on the podium in a clean sweep for Team Green and John Deere with a third place finish with her Mac Daddy. On Saturday, after losing three points on Friday and seeing an all-green podium, that would motivate points leader Rob Russell to take his Case IH Workhorse Pro to the win with a distance of 316.9, while Mike County would try to stay in the championship hunt as he would take his McNasty tractor to second and sure up a solid weekend for him with a 1-2 finish. And then Julia Ray would make it again, two County tractors on the podium as she would take her Mac Daddy to the third place finish on Saturday night as well. Well, you expect no less from a former pro stock champion in Mike Connie than to apply that kind of pressure to Rob Russell with a second, well, first and a second in that order over the course of the weekend. But you would also expect no less from a former super stock champion, Rob Russell, than to hold on. And uh, he wound up with, uh, I believe, a fourth or a fifth and a first, uh, 27 and 30, 57 points. And so only wound up losing two points to Mike at a pull so close to home for Mike Connie, and again, a former champion in the class. Mike's throwing everything he has at it, but I don't know if Rob's going to crack. And with only two hooks left to go and a 20-point margin, Rob can really play it conservatively. He shouldn't play it too conservatively in Sandwich. You don't want to get out of your groove, uh, but he basically just needs to save that tractor for the evening session and clinch it out on the track. Um, worth also noting, you mentioned 
Danny Schmucker, and uh, he had a, a nice performance over the weekend with 56 points to him, for himself, and that pretty much shored up an enderly spot for him. Uh, he now sits 25 points ahead of sixth place Jason Swanovec and Bootlegger, and so that fifth enderly transfer spot is likely to be between Jason, who is in sixth, and his son, uh, Spencer, who is in fifth with Cole Fired at 54 back of the leader and 15 up on his dad. Uh, in between there, Julia Ray with Mac Daddy solidified her third place. And so we pretty much have our Enderly set, at least by last name. We'll see who winds up taking that fifth spot. Yeah, the Connies are giving an all out push here to end the season. And it's kind of, we've seen the top three, I think, in this class consistently come in the last couple weeks now. Rob Russell is doing what he needs to do to stay on top of the points and have a decent size margin heading into the last weekend. And the Connies are giving it every day, everything they can and more to try to get in there. And I think it would be a little bit closer, too, for Julia if she wouldn't have had. She had that uh, DQ in Wellington a couple weeks ago. So um, it's uh, tough for her, but. Um, yeah, they're giving it all they can have. They're putting great passes in, but Rob's just standing strong. Yeah, that DQ cost her a shot at contending for second. I'm still not sure anybody is going to catch old Rob there. So, All right, John, now we'll move to our third location where we had polls this weekend, and this one would be in Hoopston, Illinois. On Friday would be the two-wheel drive looking to crown the champion at the end of Saturday night, but they would have session number one in the way first. And it would be running block and Joey Frazier, who would come across in the top spot with a distance of 352 feet. In second would be Clay Chastain and fist full of dollars at 348. Terry Timmerman and hot and nasty in third with 346. Jesse Petro and the Buckeye Hauler in fourth with 345. And Chad Haggerty and the Hillbilly Hot Rod at 336 would round out your top five. Now, Look at that second place finish. Clay Chastain would have a big moment there in session number one, and he would relay it into session number two. In session number two on Friday in Hoopston for the two wheel drive class, it would be Jesse Petro putting an all out last second effort in the Buckeye Hauler with a 321 and five to try to take the to take the win. And try to make a big swing in the championship. Terry Timmerman would come in second with Hot and Nasty at 321 and 3. Marty Clock and Just Like Clockwork would round out the podium at 320 and 7. Rick Austin in Dirt Flirt would finish at 318 and 2 for fourth place. Joey Frazier and Running Block would round out the top five, two top five finishes for Joey here with a 316 and 4 in the fifth spot. Now let's take a look at the championship points. John, what do you got? Well, and then there was finally a championship clinched at a venue neither of us was at, uh, but we had folks out there doing merchandise and also doing event coordination from this office, and that was Clay Chastain's first Grand National title with Fistful of Dollars. Yeah, that one was another close one, too. It would come down to, I think, one point between him and Jesse Petro for the championship. It did indeed. And how would you like to have Jesse breathing down your neck with not one, but two trucks? Again, very similar to the other uh, scenarios there with the minis and the four-wheel drives uh, that you had team vehicles, in this case, both driven uh, by Jesse that were within range of, uh, of Jesse. We should, or were within range of Clay. We should mention also that entering that weekend, Christy Seacrest actually had the lead uh, going into Hoopston. I uh, had an unfortunate uh, circumstance on Friday uh, where I think the, the, the track was sort of changing on her and the, the distances got better and better as the class wore on. Uh, Clay was the beneficiary of that and uh, entered uh, uh, Saturday night with, uh, let's see, it looks like about a five-point margin I think he had. Uh, Buckeye Hauler made it close after Saturday night's off and on rain, uh, various other issues surrounding the pole, uh, but the two-wheel drive class uh, was uh, was contested fairly, and we wind up with a one-part margin there for Clay Chastain for his first title over Jesse Petro, the seven-time champion and Buckeye Hauler. Uh, nothing easy about it. It winds up third. That's the Seacrest ride between uh, Christy and Brent. Uh, Kathy's complaint, Jesse's uh, dad's uh, truck, uh, Randy, uh, winds up 10 back and also 10 back. Chad Haggerty, uh, newcomer to the Grand National Circuit with Hillbilly Hot Rods. There's your five that are going to the Enderley. Just missing out on the Enderley by two points. Marty Clock at 12 back and uh, also Rick Austin at, uh, at 14 back or four point at the Enderley cutoff. Five, four points back in the cutoff. Uh, Rick Austin with Dirt Flirt. 
Yeah, another one to notice. Uh, Russ Nichols not making it to Enderley either. I think he finished 10th in the standings or something with On the Edge, right? Yeah, he fell off by scratching Saturday night, so he did not uh, perform at all on Saturday, and that cost him a chance at that uh, Enderley transfer spot. And then, yeah, I thought that that championship got turned on its head Friday night. I couldn't remember exactly how, but I remember that we were talking in Canton that it was uh, with Seacrest's bad pass there, just bad luck of where she was in the class, how the track changed, that it turned that whole class upside down. Yep. So that's three championships going into the weekend that changed hands. Uh, basically looking at it that way, Clay held on Saturday night, but he entered trailing, as did Ken Vini, as did Carmen Foster. So that's, uh, you got to watch the end, folks. And boy, if you thought that was going to happen over one or two days last week, just try it two hooks in an afternoon and an evening. Again, I keep pumping up sandwich, but I've seen lots of championships turn uh, by what happens in that doubleheader. I think that's a good segue into sandwich. There's two championships that maybe are going to be a little bit harder to turn around, but there's one that's going to be really close. That's pretty tight in points, though. Indeed. Let's talk about the Super Stock Diesel 4x4 class, and that pulls Thursday night at 6.30 Central, and you can watch it live streaming on ntpa.tv. Uh, keep in mind that 6.30 Central, so it'll be 7.30 in Eastern Time. Or go out to the Sandwich Fair, the DeKalb County Fair Pole, and watch it yourself. Uh, it's a great fair. That's uh, one of the Midwest's great fairs. Uh, I've been there uh, quite a number of times. Uh, really enjoyable uh, experience. Really nice grounds, well kept, uh, and it is a great pole and a great venue to watch it. Uh, currently leading in that is cream of the crop. Justin Gerhardt just kept chipping and chipping and chipping away, and he finally got ahead of the two Todd Dugan rides. Angry Shine sits in uh, second at two back. Angry Farmer Penetrating Spray sits in third at six back. Still within striking distance of that championship, though. Uh, there should be enough trucks for at least Angry Shine uh, to be able to catch uh, cream of the crop if he's uh, in the mood of doing that. But we mentioned a few weeks back, I seem to remember Justin Gerhardt having a pretty good night at Sandwich a few years ago when he needed to win there to get an Enderly spot, and he did exactly that. So if he can uh, kind of pull that same mojo uh, out again on Thursday night, it'll be a tough uh, ask for Todd Dugan to climb past him. Sitting fourth right now and pretty much locked into that spot is the top shelf of Nick Gillette. And Cummins Killer 3 of Craig Dickey sits 99 points back in fifth, and it's pretty well locked into that spot. So our Enderly uh, five are set with Gerhardt, uh, Dugan, Dugan, Gillette, and Dickey, uh, with uh, Eric Stacy smoking a little bit too far back, but he may make it out the sandwich anyway uh, to compete at least for that night's crown. Yeah, so actually, I guess I forgot there was four. So two classes are closed, two classes a little bit separated, but this is one of them with these trucks, and it'll be interesting. We talked about how maybe uh, last weekend the guys that had two tractors, either drive or trucks or tractors, depending on which class it was, didn't really work out in their advantage. We'll see if Todd Dugan can use it here and maybe use one of his trucks to help out the other, try to chase down this championship and chase down Justin Gearhart. He just needs to win with one of them. That's that's going to be what he needs to do because there will be some trucks there, hopefully uh, enough even for that six-point margin to be in play. Uh, but uh, there aren't many – there isn't much room for error. If, if Todd doesn't win with Angry Shine, it's going to be hard to overcome a two-point deficit even because you know Justin Gerhardt's going to be on his game. Yep, and he's got the experience and uh, confidence coming in from a couple of years ago. So. Yep, yep. That and he has had a strong start to the start, strong finish to the season or near finish to the season. And Todd's uh, Friday night in Bowling Green is definitely one to forget. He just had an awful time with it. Um, so, but again, he still has the chance to recover. And then you'll see four championships decided in the sandwich double header. And let's start off with, say, a Super Farm. All right, one looking at the results from Thunder in the Corn in the Super Farm class from Hoopston, Illinois. It would be Greg Freeze and Deer Tracks taking the win at 370.1 feet. Greg Ott and Dream On would finish in second with 362.5. Stan Warda in third with Hammer and Hank at 362.53. And John Silsby in fourth with Crop Doctor at 361.97. And Chris Weininger and J.D. Hogg with 358-2 and two to round out the top five. On Saturday, in Hoopston, it would be Ryan Anderson and checking out with 338-3 and three to take the win. Tony Seatsma and Wolverine Deer with 336-8.85 and 8.85 for second. John Silsby and Crop Doctor with 336.6 for third. 
and Brooke Ferris, an assorted nuts with 335 and .85, so a foot between third or second and fourth. Then Brooke Ferris would again come back with absolutely nuts at 330.27 for fifth place. Okay, we're currently uh, Ryan Anderson and checking out leads by 15 points over Rod Deck and Dream On. Uh, Rod sent his understudy, Gage Ott, to Hoopston to pull a couple of times, and Gage did a representative job there with 49 points scored over the weekend, but hit his hometown pull. Ryan scored 55 and extended his lead, therefore, by six points over Dream On. Boy, I didn't see Greg Freeze coming up through the ranks either, but he has done so with uh, now three wins on the season. That's the most in that division. Uh, and he put another one together. Uh, it was uh, Friday in Houston, and that puts him 19 points back. Uh, that is not out of range in the sandwich doubleheader, but it certainly has solidified his grasp of an enderly berth. Sitting 26 points back are the Ferrises and uh, Sorted Nuts, and sitting fi uh, 39 points back and tied for fifth is Jason Benzer in the Plastic Money. He is tied with with Wolverine Deer, which was, uh, let's see, Wolverine Deer had a 49-point weekend as well uh, and did a pretty good representative job of getting close to an early berth. The only difference between those two, it tied at 39 back, is that Jason Benzer has a win earlier this season. Uh, it was in Brandenburg, I believe. And with that, uh, he holds, would hold the tiebreaker advantage, uh, but it's kind of a winner-take-all deal. Whoever scores more points uh, in sandwich will claim that fifth spot and get invited to Urbana, Ohio. Yeah, Ryan Anderson has a pretty good grip on the championship. He doesn't have it clinched, but he has a pretty good grip heading into the final weekend. Um, I think the battle that's going to be more interesting to watch is what you just mentioned, John. Uh, the plastic money of Jason Benzer and the Wolverine deer of Tony Seatsma battling out for that final underlay spot. Yep, a couple of Michigan deers there. Only one's going to make it in in all likelihood. I don't think uh, they'll have a chance to overcome uh, Ferris at 13 points ahead of them both. But again, if we're talking about a 15-point margin being in play for the championship, I guess we ought to leave uh, the 13-point margin open. Yeah, you never know. I mean, something can happen. It's probably more unlikely than likely, but you never know heading into the final weekend and having two hooks. So, Indeed. Well, we'll discuss pro stock at length. That'll be another of the classes in the sandwich doubleheader uh, on Saturday, and we, you can view that at 12.30 p.m. Central and then also at 6.30 p.m. Central, so 1.30 and 7.30 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, also at ntpa.tv, you'll be able to live stream it then. Uh, or again, come out to the Sandwich Fair and enjoy some time in between. With the classes running on two tracks, those are sessions that usually get over with in about two hours. And that gives a lot of afternoon time uh, to walk through that beautiful fairgrounds and get some food, get back in, relax uh, before the evening session. So it's a really nice day in the Sandwich Fair. I've spent it there uh, quite a number of times. So the other two classes that we have yet to talk about are Superstock Diesel and Modified. And in Superstock Diesel... Also finishing out the weekend in Hoopston in the Thunder and the Corn was the Superstock Diesel Tractor class. And on Friday, it would be Kent Payne and the Super Rooster, winning with a distance of 331.5 feet. Travis Schlaubaugh and the Bone Twister would finish in second with 330. Mike Back and High Tech Redneck would finish at 305 and 7 for third. Steve Burge and Lock and Load at 289 and 3 for fourth. And Tabitha Demers and Smoking Hot Deer at 275.2 would round out the top five. In session number two on Saturday, it would be Travis Slabaugh jumping ahead of Kent Payne, who had took the win one night earlier. This time, it would be Slabaugh with a 315.3 to take the win. Payne would bump down to second with 264 and six for second place. Mike Back would come back to back or back to back sessions for a third place finish with 245 and 3. Trevor Demers and Smoke and Mears would finish in fourth with 216. And Steve Burge would be a scratch with lock and load, but would pick up the fifth place finish. Uh, we have a four-part margin between uh, Bone Twister and Super Rooster, each of whom won in Hoopston. Uh, Kent Payne won to tighten it up on Friday, and then Travis Schlaubach loosened it up uh, on Saturday, uh, each with a win. So Bone Twister and Super Rooster, your top two. High-tech Redneck still within range of the championship at 14 back. Mike Beck still hanging in there. He had a 56-point weekend there in Hoopston, uh, pretty strong. Lock and load with Steve Burge at 37 back, probably not uh, within range for him to get the title. Mathematically not eliminated, but 
uh, awfully hard to overcome that deficit if all three of the uh, the top three show up. Uh, but he is sitting very pretty for an early spot. In fact, he is 80 points ahead of Smoking Hot Deer. Word was that Smoking Hot Deer would have a hard time making it. They did some damage to that tractor in Hoopston. We hope that they get it uh, solved and, and uh, put back on the track for sandwich. But if they do not, then the next two in line are Esden Lanes, two vehicles, Diggin' Fever and Red Line Fever, uh, not in contention for a championship, but in contention for that uh, enderly spot if Smoking Hot Deer cannot make it. Yeah, I think definitely, like we said, Mike Back's not technically out of it, but I think this is going to be a two-polar race to the championship here. And I don't know if there's – there might be, but Travis Slava has just been so hot lately. That tractor has been hooked up. He's got it working right. Five out of the last six hooks have either been a win or a second-place finish for him with four wins coming out of those five. So – He's definitely got it going in the right direction right now. You know what I'm thrilled by is I'm looking at, at this point standings table, and I'm not seeing very many 15s. And that means that those guys, all four of those guys, are making it to every pole and making it down the track at every hook. And that has been a hard thing for that class to be able to accomplish over the last few years. They're, they've been sort of off and on. And the only list of 15s I see are the rainouts. So that means that they've all been actually pulling, and that's been really good for the fans to see. They've, they've been able to see it's not a large class of diesels, but it's been a quality class of diesels. And let's hope that that uh, continues through Sandwich and that we crown the champion uh, the right way uh, with everybody being able to participate on the track. It's been durability also that has kept Travis Schlaubach in it uh, with, uh, with that four-point margin earned basically uh, by being able to make it to the track and make a rec representative pass every time. Yep, Absolutely. Uh, and that's, you know, that's good for the fans, but it's also good for us here at the NTPA because we want to put on a good quality show. And so if we have tractors that are running strong and healthy, it's all season long, let alone just a couple weekends here and there. It's a good thing. It's a brutal stretch for the diesels. I mean, they have to be running just about every weekend. And these last few weeks, it has been every weekend. Uh, and it's just, it's just exciting to see them go down the stretch with four really strong runners. And finally, we got Modifieds. Uh, they were in action in Bowling Green for the first time since Rockwell. So they had quite a number of weeks off there. And in Bowling Green, Brett Berg did what Brett Berg does and score 59 points on the weekend. And I'm not going to say it's over, but much the same way as we've seen Rob Russell kind of lengthen the lead and hold serve, uh, Brett knows how to win at sandwich, knows how to protect his equipment and make two passes. Tom Owens, though, with a win this season, uh, still in contention, technically speaking, at 18 back. So if we have enough points tractors show up, that could still uh, be close enough. Uh, Ricky Rose and Giddy Up, or Jeff Rose, really in the modified class at 20 back, uh, has solidified an early position, probably not in contention for the title. Uh, Doug Christensen driving Doc Christensen's Pack Rat 4 is at 32 back, and sitting in fifth and in an early spot is uh, at 73 back is Double Trouble, uh, driven by Corey Kielmeyer. Uh, Tommy Owens' son, Dylan, is sitting in sixth at 86 back with Thorne, so Corey has to show up to be able to uh, clinch his Enderly birth number five. Yeah, John, you basically nailed what I had written in my notes, and that's uh, he's in firm control, two hooks left, and pretty much barring a disaster, it's, it's pretty much going to be his. It's going to be tough to catch him. But, I mean, anything can happen. We'll see if Owens and the Ramblin' Rose can get there. But Brett Berg's got a pretty good grip on the championship right now. You got to be excited for Tommy, though, to have had such a successful season. And he and Ricky and Jeff are really fighting it out there for second and third place. Uh, and currently, Tommy has the second spot man to come in uh, as a Grand National rookie, effectively. He pulled modified years ago. Uh, but to come in and immediately take over a almost certainly a top three slot. Uh, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive from the crew from Montgomery, New York. In fact, it's been a really good year uh, for New York Modifieds as Joe Ader clinched the championship there in Unlimited a couple of weeks ago. And Mark Cole will be a fifth Enderly participant uh, in the fifth place spot there. I believe that's his first Enderly. So really strong runnings uh, from the Empire State. Yeah, New York having a good year. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right, well, we already kind of mentioned what was going on in Sandwich. Again, Thursday, 6.30 Central will be the Super Stock Diesel Trucks, along with a couple regional Region 3 classes. There will be three other classes in tow with that. And then Saturday will be the Sandwich Doubleheader, 12.30 Central, which will be 1.30 Eastern, will be the Mons Pro Stock 
super farm and super stock diesel tractors. And that'll be the same four classes in the evening session, which is 630 Central, 730 Eastern. All can be viewed on ntpa.tv. A couple other quick polls that are going on in the upcoming week. Uh, Roanoke, Indiana, there's going to be the Thunder in the Park. That'll be five Region 2 classes that kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern on September 10th. September 11th, that's Saturday, that'll be in Lynn, Indiana at the Lynn's Lions Club poll. It's Region 2 classes. There'll be three of them there. And then just because we're going to go a week out ahead of time, uh, John actually mentioned this last week. This won't count for underlay points, but it counts towards next year's points, I believe. Right, John? It, it does. It counts towards underlay next year for those classes that are invited to underlay next year, which is likely all three of them, uh, the three O's, uh, the super farms, and the minis. Uh, they do, however, count toward this year's championships. And, in fact, that will be the finale for the three point O's and the minis, I believe. Uh, so, uh, so we want to make sure that it's clear that we, that's the difference between the Enderly calendar and the champion calendar is that we will crown the champions based on all the 21, 2021 points, but we will carry over points from Allegan, uh, West Salem, uh, Ohio, uh, Hillsdale, Michigan, and Raleigh, North Carolina toward next year's Enderly for those classes that are invited. And the Allegan Poll will be uh, next Wednesday, September 15th. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought up that there are other classes going on in Sandwich as well. It's kind of the, it's the truck finale uh, for Region 3. We had the tractor finale in Ridgeland, Wisconsin over this past weekend and settled five Enderly births and a number of championships there. So that was a thrilling event. And we will do the same thing uh, besides the Superstock Diesel Grand, uh, Grand National Trucks. Uh, we will also have three pro national classes, the only appearance all season long of the 3.6 trucks in NTPA competition, as well as Region 3 two-wheel drives and Region 3 four-wheel drives. Uh, there will be pro national classes, a regional national points, and there will be the finale uh, for those enderly births and championships. And if you need to see the schedule, point standings, enderly points, whatever else, make sure you visit ntpapoll.com for all that information. And we have two weeks left to go in this season here. Grand National wise, at least, and for most of these regional guys as well. Yep. Yep. We got a few polls after the fact, but uh, Enderly is really that grand finale for the season. We'll keep things up to date, uh, keep you informed of everything going on with results and point standings. Uh, as I get them, uh, we'll type them in. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yep. Have a good day.